Hello everyone, this is Andre Aguides de Jardin. My camera's focusing, and it's time to do a Journey to Nyx Crackapack. For like the two of you who live in a rock and don't know what a Crackapack is, it's where you open a pack, uh, talk about power level of cards, and decide what you do with first pick. So this is one of the packs I run from, won from the pre-release, and it's a second, second place pack, so hopefully we'll have something sick. Alright. Uh, Feast of Dreams. It's black and colorless, an instant destroy target enchanted creature or enchantment creature. Um, I think this is a very high level. I would consider very high level power card. I would consider picking it. Probably a B plus. It's almost unconditional removal. Really cheap. Instant speed. Um, yeah, it's not on solid black card. Uh, this is one of the reasons I would want to play black. Up next is a blue card, Cloak Siren. 3-2 uh, for 4, Flying and Flash. Once again, very solid card. Probably a B. I would give Feast of Dreams a little bit more umph than this, but definitely I would help to play... Uh, th this would make me want to play blue also. Alright, up next is not quite such a powerful card, uh, Lightning Dilemma. Uh, it's a red and five colorless for... An enchant creature, when it enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to target creature or player. So this actually has to resolve and then hit the creature to allow you to shock. So that's obviously not worth six mana. So what else would you have it with? Here, I should actually turn the cards this way. Always thinking, Andre, so you can read them. I can read upside down, so we're cool. <coughs> and in addition, it gets plus two, plus two. Uh, now for three mana less, you can get a creature plus two plus two and make it unblockable with that enchantment in Born of the Gods. So needless to say, this card is terrible, as in I just threw it behind me and hit the floor. Terrible. Uh, next card, we ha you will never play that card, by the way. On the floor. You'll never play it. It's F. Straight up F. Don't play it ever. Uh, up next, uh, Leogon Bland Trailblazer. It's an 04 Heroic. I think this is a pretty okay Heroic guy. Uh, I think most of the other white plus one plus one counter Heroic guys are better, but besides maybe Elite Skirmisher, he's an excellent white Heroic guy. Wears Bestow Creatures very well, as it's going to have at least seven toughness with all the bestow creatures so that's really hard to block and kill so probably a b minus c plus probably c plus i'd play him in a white deck but he doesn't make me jump for joy in a white deck up next is market festival it's an enchantment land for a green and three colorless uh, when it's tapped for mana its controller adds two mana of any in any combination to his or mana pool so it's super ramp, but at four mana, what are you ramping to? Uh, just in this format, you have Golden Hide, uh, the Unicorn, a Voyaging Seder, which is all much better ramp. Uh, some of them are better color fixing too. They're cheaper. They have bodies. I mean, this is a D minus. I might play it, but it's it's really unlikely I would ever play this. It'd have to be some really weird deck. Alright. Up next is Rotten Hulk. It's a 2-5, and it has flavor text. I mean, solid C. You'll put it in your deck. You're not looking to play it. Up next is Ferris Bane Thunderhooves. It's a 3-4 Hurrah 5 with Heroic, and the Heroic is when you cast a spell with it. Two plus one plus one counters. Um... Exceptionally okay. I think I like him more than the Battlemaster Centaur because the four toughness I think does make a bigger deal in this format. Um, but he's just a C. I don't think the green heroic decks are particularly powerful or you'd particularly go after them. But you'll play him if he's in your deck. Up next, next is one of my favorites, Blade Tusk Boar. It's a 3-4 Intimidate. 
for four mana, one red, three colorless, and sorry, not three, four, three, two, intimidate, and yeah, his toughness really doesn't matter much. So, I mean, he's a solid guy. I consider him B, B plus. I would probably play red because of him. Up next is Deadbringer Lampids. It's a 4-2 for 5 with Constellation, and whenever it or another enchantment enters the battlefield, uh, the target creature gets Intimidate, which, 5 mana, I'm not too impressed at. The 2 toughness really hurts it at 5 mana. Uh, it's going to give something else Intimidate, and then it itself may get Intimidate if we have another enchantment over 5, but I find most of the black decks that want to play later things are either going to have blue for flyers or green for just things that are much bigger than this, which makes him very boring to me, and probably a C. <clears throat> right, up next is Supply Line Cranes, and this is a pretty stellar common. Five mana for a two four flyer, and when it comes into play, put a plus one plus one counter on, another, on a creature, so it itself can be a three five flyer, which is awesome. A uh, 2-4 flyer for 5, well, isn't great, is acceptable, but a 3-5 flyer is good. And the versatility of putting a counter on another creature is just great. It can be a huge tempo swing. It can make your opponent's blocks awkward. He himself blocks all day. Probably a B, B-plus common. Alright, next up is Death Gaze Cockatrice. Or, sorry, Featherfleet Cockatrice. It has Death Touch, and Flash, and Flying, and it becomes a monster. And it's a 3 3 flying flash for 5, that touch for 5 mana. And a very solid card, but I wouldn't consider it B plus or B because it's two colors and you generally don't want to corner yourself into two colors first case in Theros block. So I'd put it at C plus, maybe B minus. I mean, it is very powerful. And in a weaker pack, you might be able to consider first picking it, but this pack is fairly strong. Um, Recollect of Commandant, it's a sorcery that all creatures get plus two, minus two until end of turn. Uh, but five mana, two red, really puts it out of the range. Probably kills most of your guys if you're playing red. I just don't really see a home for this card. There's not many red control decks that need a board wipe at five mana. In fact, I haven't seen any. It's not that powerful in effect for 5 mana, especially with even the cheaper creatures getting heroic. They would tend to be out of the range via toughness, so a D for this guy. Solidarity of Heroes. Instant. One green, one colorless for Strive, and it costs the casting cost, so green and colorless more for each one beyond the first. And it's choose any number of target creatures, double the number of plus one, plus one counters on them until end of turn. Um... Not my favorite Strive card, not my favorite Heroic Enabler. It's nice that it's in green, so if you target the Trompers, they do get huge, but you, you probably don't need to target them more than once or get the counters. The doubling of the counters seems kind of a moot point here. And I mean, yeah, there will be times where you lose to this card, but I'm giving it a D. I, I just rather, it doesn't innately give any power or toughness or make them survive combat by itself. So D, what's my rare? It's gold. Hey! Neato! I got the green blue god yet again. My Krufus, the god of horizons, is the three colors, one blue, one green, legendary cre shaman creature god. He's a four seven with the devotion. Seven claws, indestructible. And you have no maximum hand size, and if mana was emptied from your mana pool, it becomes colorless instead. And that's nothing very special in this format at all. Um, he's a D minus in, in limited. Like, his two enchantment abilities really have no implication whatsoever. You, when you're at five mana, what the heck are you going to do with holding over some colorless mana? Yeah, it may be able to activate monstrosity, but e even if you get him reliably a god, a 4-7 is good, instructable is good, but so hard to get him a god. His other abilities are just so irrelevant. I'm going to give him a D-. And ooh, uh, a tip card.
card. Is it a tip card? No, it's just an ad card for all of you who are interested in that. So let's see. I've pulled aside in this one, in this pack, the Supply Line Cranes, the Blade Tusk Bowler, the Cloak Siren, and the Feast of Dreams. So one of the strategies I have heard is you cut off red in Journey to Nyx because it's not very popular. And then you can get a bunch of good red from Born of the Gods and some okay red from Theros. And the Blade Tusk Boar is what the red-white decks are looking to have. Um, I don't think the Cloak Siren is in this conversation. I mean, it's a solid card, but just between these other three, it's nothing. Uh, I myself am going to take Feast of Dreams because I like instant speed stuff that kills stuff. And I love playing black blue and black green and black white in this control decks in this format because I like blocking and this helps enable it. It's really powerful. It deals with ordeal creatures. It deals with enchantment creatures. It deals with a bestowed up hero. Just I think a really strong card. Uh, if you took the cranes or the blade tusk for I wouldn't fault you either. Especially the cranes. I think they're just super powerful, super solid. Can lead to so much tempo. Like game, get attackers through where they couldn't before. Or it itself can just become a beating in the air, like nothing in this set gets through a 3-5 flyer. Very few creatures can, can even be at parity with a 3-5 flyer. So, but I myself am going to choose Feast of Dreams. Um, that's all I have for this crack-a-pack. Andre Aguidez out.